Hello, welcome, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for um, sharing this time with us to learn a little bit more about Enea Garden Design. Um, Enea Garden Design, we're very proud to have um, their um, director and assistant director, Nim and Brian. Thank you so much for, for coming with us this afternoon, for spending the Friday together as we learn a little bit more about, about Enea, Enea Garden Design. So um, you're one of the world's uh, leading um, landscape uh, architecture firms. It, uh, you have 150, over 150 um, person staff with um, you know, a variety of, of, uh, of uh, disciplines like um, backgrounds and landscape architecture, architecture, interior design, technical design, engineering, construction, botany. You have, um, you know, you have people from 10 you know, different countries speaking more than 15 languages, basically really um, you know, uh, what we are all about, the international city that is very cosmopolitan, that it really embraces a lot of different um, cultures and, 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 and information from all over the world. You have a global perspective in, in landscape architecture form. And we're really, as I said, we're very happy. Thank you so much to have you. Nim, you are the... Um, Nim uh, Chea is the director at Enea Design Miami, and um, your areas of interest include the sustainable design as well as the urban design and planning. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more on what you do. Well, thank you, Carmen, for the gracious introduction. Um, I'm really proud to be a part of this and a part of the projects that we're going to talk about. Um, as you mentioned, Enea is a world class. Um, landscape architecture firm and we're designers that um, we have three offices in um, we started in uh, Zurich um, a little bit outside of it a lot of people are not so familiar but they are familiar with our tree museum which is the first in the world and it's in Rapperswil, Yona. Um, uh, so so our headquarters are there. We also started the company here in Miami in 2005. And we also have a company in um, New York, which we started in 2016. So we're quite proud of the footprint that we've been able to make on the, the, the planet. And um, what we're really all about, which is a design firm um, that provides creative solutions. Um, for landscape architecture and, and our philosophy is really to provide really um, sustainable uh, pr um, solutions that are creative that really gives people a quality of life. Um, as you know, we're, we're all about the outside in approach and with my background being in landscape architecture and horticulture, um, I graduated many moons ago but I'm really proud to be able to be the director here and really practice um, everything that I've um, learned in the 20 something years with Enea. And I think that um, together we, we have made a really um, proud um, uh, footprint. We're sustainable. We, we are careful of our carbon footprint on the world. And um, I think that a lot of the projects that we're about to show you and discuss um, embodies our philosophy. Um, thank you so much, Nim. Brian, you're the associate director. Um, and um, could you please describe a little bit what we're seeing here? Oh, can't hear you. I think you're mute. Can we hear you, Brian? No, I'll describe, it's okay. Um, I think he had some technical difficulty. So right here is uh, Four Forest. It's a temporary art installation that that started. Um, it's in Klagenfurt, um, Austria, and it started with an artist's um, idea. And it's all about sustainability because the idea here is this. Uh, it's it's very it's very moving because the, they the artist thought that we as people are um, destroying ourselves and nature and um, 
we we're slashing and burning forests. We're um, not sustainable. The, the the carbon footprint is just growing and growing, and soon nature will disappear. And um, this is quite moving, and it's something that we can't see in in real time. But over over time, as you assess um, how the world has changed, it's quite evident that this is true. And this art installation took um, it started in September of 20. 18 and it was um, uh, installed and it stayed up for several months um, in 2019 of last year. So what it what it means is later on in, in the future, we have to go to a stadium just to look at nature. So it's all about the idea of being sustainable and how we treat our land and how we treat the things that um, we take for granted, such as a forest. So what we did here was we brought this artistic uh, rendition into life. Um, we worked with the artist and um, it was really incredible because what Enzo and the team in Switzerland did, uh, much credit to them, they grew, they, they selected every single species to create this layered effect of what a real forest is um, all about so um, that when it's installed it really represents the, the natural setting and then people hundreds of thousands of people came here to visit which was an incredible turning point for us because we were able to make um, a statement across the world not just in austria not just in europe but um, it's reached um, many continents and it's gotten worldwide recognition so we're quite proud of that well, incredible to see, and, and it is impressive how art and landscaping work together so beautifully, but that's something that you, I believe, Enea Garden Design does basically almost every day. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about um, your notable projects of, the, of this past year, for example. Well, actually, 20, 2019 was, um, was an incredible year for us because we started Anea Miami in um, uh, 2005, um, actually from uh, the Garden Lounge, which was, it used to be in the Miami um, Design District. And that is how we came here to Miami. We organically grew from Switzerland here. And um, when, we, when we came here, um, the, the market had changed quite a bit, you know, the 2008 market. But soon after, we, um, we, we, we got several notable projects that were quite large. And it takes, as you know, many, many years to complete one project. So last year was a great year for us to see um, some of our really notable projects, um, such as Palazzo della Luna, Palazzo del Sol and Fisher Island. Um, we also completed Calabash here, which you see, which was an, in Antigua, which um, was a very sustainable um, design project. We imported um, a lot of plant material, but we also uh, relocated over 200 trees on the site because we were not allowed to bring any palm trees um, importing in. So we made a great deal of effort to rebalance and use what we have to recreate this um, luxurious oasis for the client. But we also worked, um, we finished recently Casa Armani in Sunny Isles and um, Oceana right here, as you see, was completed a couple years ago. So we're quite proud of those projects. They are, they are quite, uh, you know, spectacular projects indeed. And I think those outdoor areas um, really complement the beauty of the architecture um, and the beauty of the surroundings. So um, when you go about uh, designing um, the landscaping for a building, what are the most requested uh, design trends that you see? Um, well, the most requested is comfortable spaces. I mean, um, they every client gives you a, a list of program of what they want i want to i want to grill i want uh beautiful trees i want but but at the end of the day what it encompasses is a comfortable space what they're looking for is a place making um 
uh, for us to, to do the placemaking for them. Um, they don't realize that they're in the garden until it's almost complete. Even when we do the drawings, um, clients um, have a tendency to love everything, but it's not until the buildings, as I think Mark had talked about in the previous one, it's so exciting to go on site and you start to see the, the volumes. And then for us, it's when the first tree arrives. So um, it's the comfortable spaces that clients really um, look for. It's what we strive to create for them as well. I think it is a growing trend. Um, and if you mean for this year in the future, um, you know, sustainability is something that people are more aware of, but how we create socially conscious designs is um, our job now. Um, how we handle water on site, how we plant native plantings um, that are that are appropriate in scale and um, in type to the, the location. For instance, the projects Oak, um, that we're working with Oko for Missoni um, and also Una, it has to be appropriate to the site, which is on the water. Um, and then the last, I guess the trend that I would say is with everything happening today with COVID, um, we're faced with something new that we're learning as we go, but the most important takeaway is that people need space. They don't want to be um, claustrophobic or crowded in a small um, space any longer. What they want to feel is uh, comfortability with the, with the nature, with air, um, and this is something we all have to keep in mind going forward when we design because it's no longer the same criteria as what we used to have. Um, and, and the good part is that Enea, it's part of our philosophy anyway, is to create these micro and these spaces. So we're, I think we're ahead of the curve. I, I think you certainly are. You have been for, for a long time. Now, um, talking a little bit more in depth about Una Missoni um, that you have um, collaborated with Oko. How did that first collaboration start? How did you came to work for, for Una and for Missoni? Well, in 2015, we were approached. Um, there was an incredible project and it was with Asymptote, uh, Hani and um, um, Jennifer and um, so we, we worked with Oko Group and Asymptote um, on this incredible project. Missoni came first. So that's how we came about to um, foster this relationship. And that's where we met um, Mr. Deronan. And our philosophies really aligned. I think that um, what transpired from the collaboration was incredible. And we're, we're really proud of how we work together. Um, when we saw each other at the opening, it was like a really nice reunion. Um, as you know, things take a really long time to transform and where we're at right now, I think um, uh, we're very proud to be a part of that team. That is, that is great indeed. Um, what would you say are some of the unique aspects that both Una and Missoni have and, and they're very different as well so you have to approach each each one differently but what are the unique aspects that you will see that um, kind of help you on that um, direction where to go on the landscaping design well as you can see from some of these images that are being shown now uh, both of the projects are located on Biscayne Bay um, and they're both have this incredible opportunity because they are elevated up above the grade to really enhance and accentuate those views out to the water itself. Um, both have interesting common element areas like this that we see here. Uh, Missoni in particular has this expansive outdoor terrace which is integrated seamlessly with this great lawn um, giving the residents this you know great event space and also what feels like you know, it's their own private yard. Um, both projects also have what is uh, an opportunity to work with the city of Miami um, and the county also. 
to have this integrated bay walk. Um, as part of our design philosophy, we want to bring people to nature. And both of these projects in their respective neighborhoods draw people from the city to the water itself. Um, they're both tailored, though, to the individual building's spirit uh, and the design that is influenced uh, by the architecture. Um, the Sony's brand especially is contemplated in the shapes and patterns of the space that you see throughout the project. Um, and on the uh, amenity deck itself, you can see here, uh, what makes this incredibly unique space is this fitness aspect uh, where the inside uh, recreation rooms um, lead you out to the west deck where we have a full Olympic sized lap pool uh, in between a alley of pitch apple trees. Um, Una, uh, on the other, is a little, is a different spirit than uh, Miss Sony. Um, in the work with uh, ASGG, uh, they contemplated the uh, contemporary yet nautical feel of that project, uh, really emphasizing the boating lifestyle. Um, in, on the street that it's on, it abuts a boulevard-like street and has a section of public park to the south. And so it really feels like it's an extension of the landscape that is created for the Luna residences. Um, the landscape amenity level also uh, lies, lies on the west side of the tower. And looking at the design inspiration with ASGG, they had taken a portion of the building which was in the back and allocated it up to the higher level to give you these views out to the water. And we took that same design philosophy and took the park-like landscape and the water and brought it then around the back of the building and created this uh, experience where the sinuous lines of the architecture integrate seamlessly into the landscape. And I think in both projects, uh, your design, the design is to be an extension of the building, creates outdoor rooms, and uh, makes spaces that are comfortable with people, like Nim said, uh, to be able to visit and enjoy nature um, with fresh air and space. That is, that is beautiful. And, and those renderings look amazing. It looks like I just want to go and take a walk on that um, boardwalk. Um, Tell me something, on the design process and working with the architects and working with the you know, structure, um, how, how, what comes first? I mean, is there like a strong influence on, let's say, for example, in Una, the nautical team, the, the, the nautical theme? Um, is there, is there um, not so much? Do you start at the beginning? Do you come when the design is already done for the architect? For these two projects, we did come on um, after um, a lot of the conceptual ideas had been um, started. And it's good for us because we get to embrace um, with the landscape, um, the, the architecture and the interior design. Um, it needs to flow. So we feel that the collaboration enhances the the sinuosity you know going from one room to another it should feel like it's one fabric that weaves throughout the, the project but for these two projects we did come on um, after the architecture had been started and I Una is incredible I think it's so unique and Missoni has its own um, brand I mean Missoni is so iconic and Una, this boating lifestyle, each project has its own spirit that I think is so true and, um, and, and, and separate uh, from, from what we've seen elsewhere. So I think it's so easy to make it um, a, beautiful, a beautiful project. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, do you take like reference points from the architects or from the developer, um, do they give you a direction? How, how is that? Uh, um, yeah, you can answer, Brian. 
we always work with the architects to understand what their concept is of the building. And when we as landscape architects come to the site, our philosophy is always to begin with the genus loci, to understand the spirit of the place, the context, um, as well as the client's, the client's goals for the site. Uh, we then incorporate the architecture into the fabric of the landscape. Uh, and we look at the interior designer's character also, uh, which is in integral to both of these projects. Uh, Missoni Baia's landscape design embraces the Missoni brand uh, and the architect's vision of this, you know, elegant glass building in set in the garden. And uh, Una uh, takes the, the language from the architect. We, we worked hand in hand with both Asymptote and uh, ASGG. Uh, but Una takes the, that sinuous language and integrates it seamlessly into the landscape. So one of the um, examples of how we integrate would be, you know, the, the Missoni patterns. Um, we look to have that fabric be part of the day beds. Um, we're looking into the pools um, so that we could reflect um, some of the coloration uh, by code. You know, we're, we have some limitations, but to, to the most that we can, we always try to express and um, uh, express the interior um, components as well as the architectural forms into the landscape design because of that connectivity um, and bringing the outside in. Right, so what Nim was saying, the, the Missoni, that iconic chevron, you know, those angles are brought into the landscape design. Uh, both in the plant materials arrangements and also in the forms that we use. That must be fun. That must be fun to like try to really bring that spirit of the building um, to a garden and to like a beautiful outdoor area and, and using basically organic elements um, to create that. Talking about um, what uh, obviously Florida has a very special climate and the fact that you're by the water, I'm sure you have to take in consideration, um, you know, the, the, the weather, the climate, the wind currents and all kinds of decisions to make so that um, the garden um, is, is sustainable, it's, it's, um, it's efficient, it works for everybody, it's beautiful. Um, so do you have a specific um, plan, a specific, um, you know, uh, trees that you prefer that you work with in Florida? Well, always our design process starts with an extensive analysis of the site. Uh, because we want to be and embody sustainability, uh, sustainable and embody sustainability in our designs, we need to see what is appropriate for the space. Uh, as we said, both of these sites are on the water. It's a tough place for a plant to live. Uh, which often means that the best plants that are suited for these types of sites are the ones that are native to this area. Uh, they're the ones that are going to take the wind, they're the ones that are going to take the salt, um, which means that, you know, silver buttonwood is pretty iconic for South Florida. Um, it's going to be right on the water. Green buttonwood as well, uh, pitch apples, uh, and we use sea grape uh, with its incredibly beautiful big round leaves. Uh, that really, you know, stand out on the site, and they have such character in the trees also. We also um, pay attention to which side of the building um, the landscape is situated on. So, um, obviously, we have four sides here, and the sun moves from east to west, coming through the south. So, depending on the time of the year, we um, propose appropriate plants um, in scale and in type to the sun pattern as well. A lot of material that won't survive in the, the hot sun on the west side, obviously, has to, we have to select it very carefully. So we use a lot of um, examias, um, kuntis. Um, I'm throwing some Latin names out, but these are the plant names. Um, on the terraces, uh, this is really a, a one of the most difficult to design because on terraces you have a slab and you have no depth ever um, to plant the, the plants in the ground. So everything has to be raised up into a planter. And 
for this reason, the size of the planter has to be appropriate. Um, we use a lot of the pitch apples um, because it's very tolerant of the, the conditions, but they also grow into 30 foot trees if you let them. So the maintenance aspect of it is quite important too. So what we do with um, clients that approach us to help them with a terrace, it really depends on the garden, but if a client approaches us to help them with a terrace, we do, like Brian say, assess, says assess the uh, site. How much roof do we have? How much space? How much width do we have? And then by that point, we have a good understanding of what would survive and um, how it should be maintained. Very well. That aspect, we work with the structural engineers and the architects, you know, really let them know what the trees need to survive and also what the building can support yeah good point so um thinking all those things in consideration what would you see what what, what are the three trends that you think are going to be the most successful for 2020 um i think that was what i was touching on earlier but i think that the outdoor living like we were talking about um, it's going to become more important. And I think that people are going to want it um, even more. It was really um, interesting during the COVID times. Um, I had a phone call with Enzo Anea, who is uh, our principal, and we were really concerned about um, just the well being of everyone and and how things are moving um, in, in, the, in both, both offices. And he said something really inspiring and interesting, with, which was <clears throat> he has built many gardens for clients and everyone travels so much and everyone works so much. And it was the first time that they had received, uh, had time, <clears throat> excuse me, to be home. And it was the first time they realized that they got to enjoy the gardens that Enzo had built for them because they were so busy traveling that, you know, it was something that they experienced in passing. But when they were home with the kids, um, being able to sit outside in the spaces, um, they wanted more. And I think this is so inspiring to, to hear that people really appreciate um, what they have and the nature and the space. Um, we just love plants. I mean, we're fanatics. So I think this is going to be one of the biggest um, trends for 2020. And this, um, you know, is in tandem with this outdoor space and outdoor living rooms to connect with nature. People want to be in nature right now. They, I think they, they're, they're craving it. Um, I do myself, so I can imagine that this is something that people will want more of 2020. And um, what I had mentioned earlier, which was the sustainability and the socially conscious design. So. Absolutely. And, and of course, you know, and staying more at home and trying to enjoy more your space um, mm -hmm. and trying to make well-being part of your, your everyday life. Yes. Um, so we see that across all of our, you know, uh, projects in, in, and we see the desire of our clients. To, to be able to um, really enjoy, uh, you know, as much as they can in a very um, organic and a very na nature um, way. What do you think this desire for wellness living is going to, how is it going to impact your industry? I think it's going to be, oh, sorry, go on, Brian. Uh, I was going to say that I would think it's going to be a part of, um, it's not going to be just a part of the program, but it's going to be demanding. Everyone will demand this as part of um, their everyday lifestyle. I think that um, a lot of our projects already have this wellness com component with spas and fitness, but it's not just only that aspect. It's the mental and health aspect of um, gardens are therapeutic and that alone contributes to the well-being of a person. Um, along with exercising, we've done um, gardens where there's a loop where you can walk around and, and this, this is something that is a luxury to have. What were you going to say, Brian? I was going to say, I mean, that's 
part of Anaya's design philosophy is to make landscapes that improve people's quality of life. You know, and each of these places gives us a unique, a unique opportunity to find that here in South Florida. Yes. And and how were you able to incorporate that wellness feeling into both Una and Missoni? As I mentioned with Missoni, we have uh, an Olympic-sized flat pool, and pools in general add another uh, dimension to the site. They allow activity outdoors. Uh, they encourage people to use their outdoor spaces, even in the hot weather here. Um, both of these spaces incorporate comfortable living environments, which are so important to be inviting and also to have a sense of tranquility. Uh, as Nim said, these are therapeutic gardens also. Mm -hmm. And also contributing to the health of our environment. Uh, we use uh, native plants, which encourage birds and butterflies to come through the spaces. Um, mm -hmm. It really brings people and nature together. And then one other aspect that um, is, it's both projects, is that the trees give off oxygen and this is what we need. So this, the more that we have in of landscape and being in nature, um, it helps us become healthy as well. This is something that um, both Una and Missoni have a lot of landscape that creates this comfortable environment um, having a microclimate that's um, with shade because it's so hot here in Florida. Um, nobody really wants to sit outside for too long, right? And unless you're unless you have the shade of a canopy tree, an umbrella, a beautiful pergola, um, which which Missoni and Una both have, um, they have their own styles of um, elements. Um, furniture elements that really complement the building. But all of these uh, components that we talked about is, is what uh, wellness is about at the end of the day. And each of these projects has enough variety that it accommodates uh, different people's lifestyles and their needs. So each mm -hmm. space is going to have something that calls to someone else. I mean, the, the other thing that, uh, like Una, is is incredibly close to the, the, the Rickenbacker. So people bike there, walk there. I mean, I walk there and bike there as well. And this is part of wellness. It's not only what's on the property, but it's the connectivity to nature. Um, you're right on the water, having these breathtaking views. Um, you soak that in and you feel good. It's It's part of it. It's a good point. Also, these projects are close to and integrated with Miami's bike path system. Mm -hmm. And what um, Missoni is doing and what UNA is doing also, but Missoni especially critical where it is in the Edgewater neighborhood, is creating one of the longest stretches of continuous baywalk that's mm -hmm. part of the Biscayne Bay master plan. These are all Absolutely. active outdoor spaces. Yeah, it's 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 been amazing, and and Enea, you know, being already in the city for so long, I'm sure that you are are proud to see all this transformation that the city is is doing, opening new ways, opening um, you know access to the water. So that is it's an amazing contribution that you are also part of it, and it's I'm sure very exciting for you to see. Um, like you said, both. Una and, and Missoni. Um, Missoni will be completed next year in 2021. Una is going to be a little bit later, but like I'm glad that you mentioned, Nim, that in case one of our clients wanted to decide to perhaps have their terrace landscape to just be a continuation of the arrival experience through the amenities, through the beautiful landscape private areas and as well of the landscaping of the surrounding areas that you many times take care of as the master planners, um, mm -hmm. that would be also a possibility to be able to just have like the complete, let's say complete Enea experience. Absolutely, we'd be honored to be a part of um, any of the um, individual projects within this master plan because I think um, any client that comes to us that would be interested in this um, already gets 50% of the, the design because it's going to be within um, the footprint of the gardens already. So we would 
try to connect and extend. Um, we think that also any any person that um, would seek to, to, to live in either projects um, already has embraced what the projects are about. So if we extend it, it's just it's just making their their bringing the what Enzo calls outside in. So we're bringing the master plan and the gardens into the closer to the units. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if we have um, any questions from our audience. That will be a time to um, see if we um, have anybody that has a specific question. I think that we basically touch a large array of, of you know, elements on in the sense that you sometimes start from the master planning because you have a project that are several buildings. So you not only do the landscaping for the amenities, but you also do the surrounding areas. You also have the chance to create these incredible green spaces, bringing nature into the buildings, but also you could potentially use um, your expertise in the private residences. So it really is an incredible, an incredible um, line of, of you know, work and bringing beauty, obviously, and, and nature into, into our clients' homes. So I see that there is a question here. Um, could we be more specific on top three um, plants or trees that are the um, trees that I should plant by my um, by the water. Sure. So by the water, some of the best ones, as I mentioned before, are going to be buttonwoods, sea grape, pitch apple. Those are the ones going to really take uh, the wind and salt. Um, those are trees. If they are in, if the uh, the the person asking the question is um, interested in in palms, because palms are part of the South Florida landscape, um, coconuts do very well. Um, of course, you want to specify um, a, a variety that is, is not susceptible to lethal yellowing, which is a, a very prevalent disease that's um, with, with the coconuts. So we've, done, we've used um, Malay, green Malayans, which are, which are dwarf, and then we have used the uh, maypan as well. Um, Flor South Florida thatch palms, so these are native palms that um, that really are 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 going to withstand a lot of the salt and the wind. Um, we've used parotis palms as well. They have many canes, so you know each palm's uh, silhouette is used in a different fashion on a project. So I hope this helps. Um, and just one more question: um, Do you use flowers as well? Yes, um, we use different types of flowers. So our landscape, um, we like, we're about texture and form. Um, flowers that we use are often used as accents to tie into, let's say what we're seeing right now, which is the Missoni um, uh, textures and the textiles, um, the patterns we would pull some flowers that match to it and bring it into the landscape so that we connect. Um, we use many, many flowers. Um, a lot of them we try to source that are native so that, um, so that they're not um, as high maintenance as let's say foundation plantings where you would have um, seasonal plants. We find that this is, um, it's very high maintenance they don't grow throughout the year. Um, they have to get switched out very often, and they only have a certain bloom time, um, which actually brings a good point, is we also study the, um, the bloom season of a, of a plant so that we understand that um, South Florida is a, sometimes it can be a transitional um, city where folks come here um, between, November and May, right? That's our high season. And so we try to plant um, flowers that are blooming at that time because it's when it's most appreciated by the by the user. So yes, we do. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love that you really 
care about your your client you really think about every possibility and how to to make the environment more more sustainable as well um so i really thank you thank you so much for for being with us this afternoon thank you brian thank you nim um we we really appreciate having you i don't know if you have any anything else that you would like to share with us um well i think as a closing statement we just want to thank everyone for supporting us um on on allowing us to be as creative as we can um it's not always so easy when you're when you're having to collaborate with so many different um wish lists right and everyone has been patient and really believe in us um, to realize a project like this it's been a pleasure working with the oko group um, it's been a pleasure working with the design team and i think that we're just so excited to see all of this and we thank you as well carmen for moderating and um, allowing us to be a part of this it's really it's really inspiring yeah and I'm just going to add that it's been an honor to be a part of two amazing projects that have come out of this partnership with OCO Group. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Neem. Have a good afternoon. And um, we look forward to seeing you soon and to seeing those beautiful plants um, and, and gardens in, in, at both at Missoni and UNA. Likewise. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. Bye.